Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Friday, the 9th of July, 2021, to Peace Through the Word, a devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona. Elvis Carrera, good morning to you from Lima, Peru. How are you this morning? Trusting all is well in the beautiful country of Lima, of Peru, and in the city of Lima. And so good to welcome you, uh, Elvis, and all of you, wherever you're chiming in. Early this morning, I'm coming to you early. I've got uh, things I've got to do. That's what happens when I get back after I've been gone for uh, at least four days. So uh, on the on Fridays and Saturdays, I'm, I'm going to be coming early. That's going to probably be the norm. Okay, so thank you so much. Appreciate it uh, immensely. And uh, hopefully you all got your coffee. <laughs> you know, I've got mine here this morning. And so it, <clears throat> it's another beautiful morning here in southern Arizona. Clear skies, uh, warm temperatures. Lynn Lawrence, good morning to you uh, from College Park, Maryland. And welcome to Peace Through the Word. I really appreciate how you uh, diligently, uh, and I, I say this for all of you, uh, diligently make this a intentional part of your day. Uh, you have no idea, <clears throat> excuse me, how much that uh, is appreciated. And uh, so thank you. Brothers and sisters, this morning, uh, we're going to listen to Dr. Martin Luther as he talks to us about a subject <laughs> that I think we all struggle with. Um, I would be surprised if I uh, met anyone who did not have uh, a problem with this particular subject, and that is worry. You know, I think we all worry uh, to a certain degree about many things. And uh, some people might think that that's a human trait, but, and, and it may be because of our, <laughs> because of our sinful nature, you know, it may be. But you're going to hear what Jesus has to say about it, and it's not real positive. <laughs> okay. Jesus is going to talk to us about worry and why we, why we worry and why shouldn't we worry. Because we shouldn't. We really shouldn't. And uh, so anyway, I pray that not only is that going to bless all of us, but I pray that that is going to give us genuine, real peace not to worry. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> in the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you Matthew chapter 6 and uh, in verse 25. And, uh, you know, Jesus is going to tell us pretty emphatically why we shouldn't worry. <laughs> so, Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 25. And, you know, obviously, Jesus says is 100% true, but... You know, this is very, very profound and, and, and very, very much true. Um, and so listen to what he says here. Jesus says, therefore, that was because of all the things that he said prior, which was on with which regard which was regard to fasting and laying up treasures uh, in heaven, not here on earth. So he says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. In other words, don't worry. Don't be anxious about your life. What you will uh, eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will put on. He says, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And then he says this. I want to read this. He says, look at the birds of the air. You know, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And which of you, by being anxious or worrying, 
can add a single hour to his span of life. And why are you anxious about clothing? You know, I'm not, (laughs) you know, but, well, I don't know, maybe I am. But why are you anxious about clothing? Uh, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? And then he gives us this. He says, O you of little faith. You see, those are pretty strong words from Jesus when he ends everything. He says, O you of little faith. You see, when we worry, that's indicative of how little our faith is. That means we're not trusting Jesus to take care of us. You know, I had a situation before I got in the ministry. Uh, I was in the the business world, and uh, I had a very lucrative business career. Um, And you need to understand that. And it was, you know, coming to an end. And, uh, you know, it got me worried, you know, really much. And in fact, I was really angry with God. You know, I'll just be straight up, straight honest. And uh, I was accusing him of really not knowing what he was doing. And I was explaining <clears throat> explaining to him, you know, this is a testimony. <clears throat> and I've got, you know, responsibilities and so on. Like, he didn't already know that. <laughs> he knew it better than I did. But anyway, <clears throat> I was sitting out in my patio and... Uh, he caused a pretty large bird to fly right in my line of vision. I couldn't miss this bird. And so I watched this bird and I watched him land <clears throat> on one of my trees out in, the, out in the backyard. And I noticed, I said, you know, boy, if that bird landed on a wrong branch, that branch would break and not, you know, not hold him. So <clears throat> that bird has to know what branches that he can land on. And that brought me to this passage of Scripture where Jesus says, well, look at the birds. You know, I take care of them, don't I? Well, aren't you worth more than a bunch of birds? <laughs> and, you know, as I go, yeah. He said, well, don't you think I'm going to take care of you? And have I ever, have you ever missed anything yet? And I went, no. He said, well, then. What makes you think you're going to miss something? No. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got your point. I got your point. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's see how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this for us this morning. <clears throat> he says, in this passage, Jesus delivers a scathing sermon against worry. Worry shows lack of trust, and therefore it's opposed to the gospel of Christ. Worry is a problem for the world at large as well as for Christians. It is. It's a universal problem. So he says, The devil hates anyone who wants to live a Christian life and declares that Christ is Lord. The devil, the ruler of the world, keeps opposing and antagonizing believers. He can't attack them through God's word and faith. So he attacks them with what is under his authority and control. Believers are trapped in their bodies, which are still in Satan's kingdom. So he harasses and imprisons them, deprives them of food and drink, and constantly threatens to take away all their wealth and possessions. This is all the work of Satan. As this is happening, believers naturally try... (laughs) Try to find ways to escape these calamities and avoid losing their property. The people of this world, however, praise those who strive for wealth and possessions. We do. And we say that's the American way. (laughs) No, it isn't. It's the way of Satan. (laughs) It's not the American way. Well, I guess it is because that's the way America is going. The way of Satan. All right. So, uh, It goes, instead of seeing striving for wealth as a failure to trust God, they consider it as a commendable virtue and praiseworthy character trait. 
And we do. Take note of what it means to serve wealth. <clears throat> it's undue concern about the needs and necessities of life, such as worrying about what you will eat and what you will wear. In short, it means thinking only about this life and accumulating a large fortune under the mistaken notion that this life will go on forever. Boy, no, it won't. We don't have to consider daily necessities such as eating, drinking, and buying clothes as serving and worshiping wealth. Purchasing and storing food is essential for life. The sin, however, is being concerned about them and setting our heart on them as a source of comfort and security. You see, and that's what we do, especially here in America. You know, there's so much emphasis put on people for on, on, the, on, the, on the lifeline of our lives that is like real long. <clears throat> Corporate America wants people, an investment wants people to focus on this little bit of that called your retirement age. You know, and accumulate all this stuff for just this little bit. But they'd say nothing about where you're going to spend eternity. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. So we ought not to worry, brothers and sisters. We really ought not to. So I pray that that will give us real peace as we consider how God always provides for us and he always will. You know, there's no question. He will always provide for us and he'll provide for you today. No matter what you're going through today, he'll provide for you. All right. So <clears throat> brothers and sisters, let's together profess the Christian faith and we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, together we pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God and, and merciful Father who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may not have power over us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, brothers and sisters, again, let me thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for chiming in to this piece of peace with the peace through the word ministry at an earlier hour and I thank you immensely. Again we've got such a beautiful day here in southern Arizona. It's going to be warm but uh, nonetheless beautiful regardless. So I pray that you'll go out and enjoy your life. Lynn Lawrence you're living in a rather unique place from your photos. Uh, that's quite a place that Lynn Lawrence who is chiming in is residing in at the moment and uh I've never seen something like that before. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching that with much enthusiasm. <laughs> so, 
you know, I guess, but the only problem, I, it doesn't have uh, a bathroom, does it? I don't, I, I think that's what you sta stated. <laughs> so that would be a little bit, you know, different. But anyway, guys, go out and have fun. Enjoy your life. Whatever it is that you're doing today, enjoy your life. And Elvis, thank you again from all the way from South America and Peru. Uh, blessings to your family in abundance and all your ministries going on there in the big city of Lima. And uh, all of you, regardless of where you're chiming in, uh, just God's blessings to all of you in abundance. So wheels up, flaps retracted. I conveyed all of you tremendous blue skies.